Yo! Check, check, check. Hey! They started this race a little early on me, but this is Tulsa Tough. Day two, pro men. Um, they, they started this race five minutes early, which was weird because they posted a delay earlier, and they're five minutes ahead of the uh, normal schedule, so looks like we got a little bit of chatter between uh, Corey and someone on American Cycling. American is definitely going to be going after it tonight. I think they're one of the teams that feels like, I don't know if they feel like they missed out, but they definitely wanted a little bit more last night. They got Summerhill in third, but they have a lot to prove. So if you didn't see last night, uh, Justin Williams kind of advanced his way. There was a big crash of seven to go. That sort of disrupted the normal Legion thing where they just kind of control the front. And Justin was kind of the last man standing from Legion in the front group. I really thought Miami Knights had it. They had at least two guys still there. They had um, Clever Martinez and Alfredo Rodriguez, two great sprinters in an extremely select group that made it to the finale. I guess I'm... Coming into it a little late. What's up? I'm Jonathan Crane. I am a mediocre Cat 2 cyclist out of Birmingham, Alabama. Um, do a lot of coverage on this channel of American Racing. I've done a lot of this in the past, watching along with races that are happening live. Talking about them sort of from my perspective, talking to the live chat, just hanging out with you guys. Also do a podcast slash Twitch show on this channel called American Peloton where we talk about American racing. Um, this is the first time I've had a chance to do this this 2023 season because all of the ACC races that have happened thus far I've been at the race. And obviously I cannot stream the race if I am at the race. That makes it hard. So, anyway, we're getting into the second day of Tulsa Tough right now. We've got this new DCC team. Seems like they really have something to prove. I guess one thing I should, I should talk about is who's not here. So, I kind of expected that we would see everybody as we have in the past at Tulsa, but we got no... Looks like we got nobody from uh, Project Echelon, no riders from Automatic. Cool, what's up, Ben? Is Ben is the other uh, co-host of my show on this channel. But Ben, keep your eyes on you know quality control. Let me know how it's looking and all that stuff. Um. Yeah, that DCC team has the Alpecin logos on their sleeves, like uh, the Alpecin World Tour team a little bit. So that's, don't be confused, that is not the World Tour Alpecin team. Yeah, I'm interested to see what happens today. Yesterday there, was a, there were a lot of controversies across the men's and women's race. Uh, Legion women just won the race today, also won the race yesterday. Well, yesterday, Legion women were first across the line, and then uh, Kendall Ryan was relegated for what I thought was a pretty aggressive. She called it shutting the door. I it looked more to me, ripping the door off the hinges and throwing it at the person. It was like it's kind of a letter of the law, spirit of the law thing. Like, I guess you are allowed to close the door. I'm not sure if you're allowed to look over your shoulder, see that someone is coming faster than you, and just slam right to make them right into the barricade. That seemed a little bit, like, beyond the pale to me. I don't know if you guys have seen the clip. Maybe I'll try and pull it up a little bit later. And we can take a look at it. Ooh, already a crash. So, 
Tulsa is almost always a crash fest. Welcome. There were there was one in the women's race. Apparently everyone is fine. Even the person who went down the hardest, just a little road rash, and she'll be racing tomorrow. But yesterday in the men's race, we had a couple of big pileups, which led to the second big controversy of the night, which was Alec Cowan shove, uh, push something. Alec Cowan from Legion, Legion of LA, uh, I guess I would say shoved a rider from, uh, looked like support, clean sport, Gutenplan coaching. Might have been David Gutenplan himself. Um, nobody's really talking about it, but he did get DQ'd for that. I guess we can take a look at the results from last night while I'm talking about it. So, Justin Williams, I mean, all credit to him on the final last night. That was nuts. He uh, he really pulled it, like, completely out of nowhere on that one. I thought he was washed. Even a few weeks ago at Speed Week, I was at Speed Week, and he was getting, I don't want to say destroyed, but he was not a factor in the Speed Week races. Now, I know he was racing his way into form, but just... For me, like, if I'm racing my way into form, I'm not going from, you know, the back half of my field to winning the biggest race of the year in a matter of what has it been since Speed Week, like four weeks. So, I mean, some of that is that he just has amazing genetics, and some of it is that he knows exactly what works for him. But, yeah, so he won last night. This front group was very select. There were only up to 13. Cesar Marte from Work Hard, Be Humble. That was the entire front group. So only 13 guys finished in that lead group last night. I thought we'd have a little bit of a lull where we could talk about things, but looks like the answer to that is no. This is what the other teams have to do tonight, though, if they want to win, is put some pressure on Legion. Looks like we got two DCC. One Denver Disruptors, and one American Cycling, and one Miami Knights. Oh, no, that's one from Legion on the back, not Miami Knights. Too many b blue tops, black shorts this year. The new, I guess that's the new, like, the final Legion kit for the year. Pretty minimal, makes sense that it's, like, the Rafa deal. But, yeah, after all that controversy last night... And a couple of big crashes in the men's race. Justin sort of freelanced his way to a win. It came from nowhere. I was really sure on the last couple of laps that Clever Martinez and Alfredo Rodriguez had it in the bag. Those are two great sprinters. Last night's course, pretty similar to this one. You can see that it's a little bit downhill on this side. This is one of those courses that doesn't have a hill per se, not like a steep kick. But it's kind of rolling up and down the whole time. So hopefully that'll make it some interesting dynamic racing. We're not seeing just like the super boring, you know, full Legion train on the front. Like we do in some of the like flat, wide, four corner stuff oftentimes. Y'all let me know if the uh, image quality gets weird or anything. I have not used this to stream a race in a minute. I've mostly been doing the podcast or Zwifting in this exact spot. So I had to move some stuff around, make some adjustments. But glad to be here. Glad to be back watching some American racing. Um, so who all is not here? Automatic, I would think, would be here. But it seems like they've like changed their change their priorities up for the year. But the dark horse really is Butcher Box, I think. They I coming into this year I kind of thought like who does Butcher Box even have? Spencer Movenzada from Butcher Box went over to Blazers who I'm going to say maybe underperformed last night. Danny Estevez was their best placed rider back in 10th. Now, I think they were getting together and maybe about to launch some kind of move when that crash happened with seven to go last night. 
So maybe we're going to see them. They're really easy to spot in the bunch. Blazers has the pink helmet, brown-ish. There's a rider bridging across right there from Blazers. This is what I wanted to see, though. It looks like people are really taking it to Legion. And we're going to have a good active race where they're forcing Legion to cover moves. Or Now the question is, looks like we got Sam Boardman and one other Legion rider. Saying image quality, is it... I mean, the stream itself is a little bit grainy. But is it uh, flickering? The, screech, the stream itself, like coming into me, has a decent amount of artifacting when the camera whips around when things are happening quickly. But thank you, Elijah G. Let me know if it fully like glitches out or we're losing a lot of frames. But yeah, the question is... Okay, yeah, that's just the quality coming off of the cameras there, I think. Um... The question here, so we got Legion Riders getting in these breaks, which is not normally Legion's move. Sam Boardman, one of the Legion Rider there. The question is, do those Legion Riders pull through? Or is their role in those breakaways to cover and kill? And how you cover and kill a breakaway is get yourself in it and then refuse to pull through. And in a small breakaway early on where there are less than 10 guys, pretty easy if you're in that breakaway to look around, take stock, and realize these two Legion guys aren't pulling. I don't want to pull them to the finish. And then generally cohesion breaks down and the break comes back. That's a way to kind of flip the strategy if you're a team that wants a field sprint, which Justin won the field sprint yesterday. Uh, I would assume Corey is field sprint capable. So you would think Legion wants a field sprint. That's another way to bring it down to a field sprint. Put your riders in the breakaway and then have them not contribute to the pace at all. Now, teams that do want a breakaway, Texas Roadhouse just pulled off the front there. Texas Roadhouse is really coming into its own. Yep. You see that DCC rider making this motion on the front? That is him saying, we got to rotate. Somebody's not taking pulls. Counter from a uh, Austin Aviators move here, though. Austin Aviators rider off the front. Wonder if that's uh, Connor White from Austin Aviators. He plays pretty well last night, 20th place. It is surprising, though, Anthony, to see Legion doing the catch and kill thing. Just because their normal move is to sit at the front, but they did they did do that last night, and Justin did win, but they lost control toward the end of the race, so maybe they're going to realize that's not the way on this course. I think this course is a little bit punchier, a little bit more technical. We can take a look at the course. I got a course map pulled up here. You want to see the overhead of what the course shape. It's kind of a capital L shape almost. Um, here's the course shape. So you got down here, here, left turn, left turn, one right right there. So one, two, three, four, four five, six corners. It's kind of rolling hills throughout. But it's not as consistently wide as the course was last night. It seems like a dicey move, though, to let control go. Knowing, I, I guess, it is, I mean, it was correct, it won. I think... I definitely heard the quote, your tactics weren't wrong if you won the race, and that's true, you know, as long as you're riding safely, but it's just so dicey in a race like this. Okay, Iman Lucas, I think he went down last night in the uh, 
seven to go crash. And one of the crashes in the second half last night, he went down. So it's good to see him fully upright. Cool. Thanks, Jackson. It might just be a little too small. I will not point the mouse then. This DCC team, I think this is their first real showdown with Legion. But I know they got, like, pretty big money behind them. I don't recognize a lot of their riders' names. Uh, we got Rops, Dario, Jonas Schmeister, um, Julian Kern, Florian Weber. If anybody's recognizing these names, you know, let me know what their deal is. They do have the German champion. I think they might be German, but they definitely, I think last night was their first like real showdown with all the big teams or most of the biggest American teams. So I think they realized they got to go harder. Yeah, Dolomite, that is um, Iman Lucas in the break. It does seem like the other teams realize after last night they got to take it to Legion early, hard. I believe all these races are also only one hour, which means if you want to really burn through Legion, if you want to have any chance, you have to be sending almost like suicidal level moves just from, from the gun. Hopefully we don't see the, the crashes we saw last night. It might be that... See, we got other teams other than Legion chasing, Blazers chasing. I would think if you're Blazers, you would want to make Legion chase. Unless, you know, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I've uh, I've put some of my thoughts on what could potentially be going down there, out into the ether, here and there. It looks like this two-man move is being slowly dr drug back. Sam Boardman, when you look back and see that... uh that mustache on the front, you know you're going to have a hard time staying away. Ah, uh, yeah. No, Justin is, like, if anyone can go from the back to the front toward the end, it's Justin. And he, he can and he did. But, like, think about when that crash happened, that seven-to-go crash. It could be that he's, uh... If he had been behind that crash, just as a not because he couldn't get up there, but because he was waiting to make his move, you know, that would have been a complete disaster. So I'm just saying that strategy is a gamble as compared to the strategy they've been known to employ, which is just control it. Okay, here goes Blazers. I raced with um, Johnny Brown from Blazers a couple of weeks ago. He's up in Knoxville or Chattanooga, I believe, but he came over to the Nashville Wednesday night race and uh, just absolutely ripped it. I'm going to have a video on this channel from that race. I had a lot of footage of just sitting behind uh, Jeremiah Stoller from Nashville Local and... Uh, Johnny Brown from Blazers, those two just rotating on the front going 29 miles an hour. Yes, uh, Blazers and Aviators are both owned by Legion. Uh, we've talked about this pretty extensively on, no, that's Spencer Movenzada from Blazers. He was kind of one of the star riders on Butcher Box. Really good breakaway rider, went over to Blazers last year. Um, but yeah, we've talked about the Blazers, Aviators, Legion connection pretty extensively on the American Peloton, which is a podcast slash like Twitch live show we do on this channel uh, coming up this Wednesday. We do it every other Wednesday, but my thoughts on that are like, I don't love one team or organization like owning a bunch of teams. And that's been my criticism is like, it's it's weird and could cause collusion. Not that it necessarily is. 
But oh yeah, Dolomite Johnny Brown was on fire at uh the Snake Alley weekend. We talked about that last time on uh American Peloton. I believe he got two podiums in three days or three podiums maybe even definitely multiple podiums speaking of dillman we got a uh texas roadhouse rider at the front there we are going to have a texas roadhouse rider on the show coming up pretty soon okay justin won the driveway everybody's been Ripping the uh, the local weeknight crits, getting ready for this. So Corey did a lot of work early last night, and uh, got himself. I don't want to say got himself dropped, but he was just like doing the hard work for the team. So I wonder if we're gonna see him playing that role again, or if he's gonna be the sprinter tonight, as this is a little bit punchier of a team. Uh, we got two riders from NCL teams. So the big split here in the Peloton is NCL League. That is the new like points based uh crit league where there are points on every lap and you accumulate points throughout the race. Uh there's been one round of that so far. That league owns two teams. Those are Miami Knights, Denver Disruptors, they had two two riders off the front there, one from each team with a Legion rider. So that's half. And then there's Legion, which owns Legion, Austin, Aviators, and Miami Blazers. Uh, Dolomite, no, they talked about that on... There was a really wide-ranging and really good interview on uh, Payson McKelvin's podcast with Justin... A couple of weeks ago, where he talks about what he says is that their plan is to build those teams up to a point that they can sell off that ownership and they can all be like kind of completely their own thing. It's just helpful at this point to have some amount of the same infrastructure to help build things up. Um, so, I mean, if that does happen, that, that Eschew like my biggest criticism of them, but for now it's a little bit of a goofy setup. But that's why. So they do all ride SRAM group sets, but like there's only three. Okay, what I want to see, I want to see a uh, an American crit team sponsored by L2 or Sensa, one of the Chinese direct to consumer groups. L2 or Sensa, if you're watching this and you want to sponsor my team, let's go. I'll throw a sensor on all my bikes. I really, I want to try the Sensa stuff. Le okay. Justin owns... Legion, Aviators, and Blazers are owned by the same people. How's that? Like... The Legion team organization doesn't own the other two team organizations, but all three teams are owned by the same group of people. That's more accurate phrasing. It's like we got somebody from Cliff Bar shooting off the front here, trying to. Cliff Bar, Texas Roadhouse, two teams that definitely want a breakaway today. I also raced with uh, Mason Schofield. I don't know if it's an LLC or a holding company or like what the corporate structure is in that, but it's definitely, you know, Justin, it's primarily Justin. He's like the driving force behind it and one of the mayors. Seeing a lot of Texas Roadhouse near the front. Looks like Kyle Perry. I know he was caught up in one of those crashes last night. Um, looks like he DNF'd it last night. So good to see him back out there. It does look like most everybody who crashed was able to get everything together and get back out there today, which is good to see. It was a pretty nasty looking crash, but I didn't see anybody getting like carried off on a stretcher or anything like that. Uh, 
Dolomite, that's a point that I'm going to give... People have criticized me for coming at Legion too hard. I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to side with Legion, because I do think it seems like basically a guy was like, I came up with the idea to do a series and call it Crit, and it's like, is that an idea? Because they're called Crits. So it just seems like a guy, like I'm sure a lot of people have talked to a variety of people in the peloton but especially justin about saying like hey let's start our own league or let's do a series of races with you and that's just i, I don't know if that's a i don't know if if that's an idea that you can steal um yeah i think justin just has has a lot to prove after the season he's had. And he, you know, he's the one who's sponsored by Red Bull. He's the one who's been on the cover of Bicycling, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, please feel free to bring this to a Conspiracy Corner. I love that, Dolomite. Slow Ride is probably my favorite cycling podcast overall. Oh, no. Rider down. That looks like... uh. Is that maybe a special X-74 rider? Looks like he's okay. Maybe just a slip out. Juan Arango from Denver Disruptors going with uh, somebody from Blazers and somebody from Legion covering. All right, let's watch the Legion rider. Does he pull through it all, or does he just sit up if they let him get on the front? My guess is that Legion is getting in these moves and just sitting up. Blazers rider, uh, not really pedaling. Oh, I think that's Brandon Fury from Blazers. He's been wearing those American flag gloves. He was wearing those at um, the race in Aniston. Sonny King crit. I was there. He looks like he can't decide. He's like trying to see, like, do we have a gap? It seems like he's half putting his head down for arrow. And then half putting his head down uh, to look behind him. Denver Rider taking another pull. Legion Rider just sitting on. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, Legion's definitely doing a catch and kill. And so so far it's working. But the question is, can they do it enough to burn through everybody? Uh, the Justin and Jeff Linder beef was goofy. I think that Justin came at Jeff way too hard. Jeff levied some very mild and fair criticism of Legion. Like, if they haven't paid people from Lion's Den, that's just factual. And you could say, like, oh, it's because this or that, you know, sponsor didn't come through with money or whatever your reason for that is, but it's goofy. Whoop. This happened once during the women's race. Let's see if we can get it back pretty quickly. Get it centered back up again. But yeah, I thought the Jeff Linder and uh, Justin Beef was very goofy on Justin's end. And yeah, I, you got to be able to take a little bit of light criticism in the arena of professional sports, you know. What did Jeff say without merit? Everything Jeff said, I don't know. I don't think Ju Justin didn't set the record straight on anything. He just made a bunch of Instagram posts that were saying, like, we run California and blah, blah, blah. Like, I didn't see any facts disputed there. If there were some, I missed it, but... Okay, well... That is the one that he didn't even say. Okay, I will say this. I know riders who did that race who were not paid promptly, and they were only paid 
after doing a lot of complaining about it. So they definitely were dragging their feet on paying people. Now, the person Jeff is talking about, I don't know. But I feel like if they, if that was fully untrue, if everybody had been paid, Jeff's response would have been, we paid every single rider, but he didn't say that. He refuted a lot of other stuff that was, you know, more subjective about how they ride. But he did not make any specific rebuttal to that point, which makes me think that at least someone probably still has not been paid. Yeah, I believe. So, I mean, Jeff's criticism of Legion was pretty mild. He said, overall, I think they're a force for good in the sport, which I think I agree with. I think they've probably brought more eyeballs to it and more interest and, like, a new sense of how to engage with fans and audiences and social media and, like, made it cooler than it was, for sure which is, I think, net positive. Jeff's criticisms were just about the writing style, which I've been on the record. I I think the Alexis Ryan, or Kendall Ryan move yesterday was a little bit egregious. I don't know. You guys want to see it? I've got it queued up here. All right, here's, here's the move from yesterday. So, right here in the Stars and Stripes, just watch her. As they come around the corner, Dean looks, sees her, just takes her all the way to the... Let's go back and see if we can see it again. So... Yeah, watch the Stars and Stripes jersey. Oh, it's a one it's a couple more corners here. Basically, she looks, sees someone coming faster than her over her shoulder, and just swerves left to right across the entire course to cut off her line. Now, shutting the doors, yeah, she did. It's right here. Look back, sees the rider coming, sprints and deviates at the same time to pinch her off. Now, okay, I don't think you should be able to do that in a race for the reason that if people start doing that, we're all going to crash more. But I don't think, I'm not sure that there's a a rule written now. It, I looked today to see what the rule could be that she was disqualified under. And I think it was maybe just a, a general, like, unsafe writing kind of rule. Or it could have also been the rule about sprint deviations. But it's hard to say that they were starting the sprint in earnest before the final corner. A lot of races, the sprint does start before the final corner. But regardless, if you are going in a straight line and someone is coming around you, it's one thing to ride the racing line and not allow them to come, come around on the faster racing line. It's another thing to look back, see where someone is, and go, I'm going to sprint and put myself in the exact place that they're going. Uh, Anthony, I think it's more about Legion doing it than showing it. That's, uh, like, I don't know, go, go look up the video of, uh, Nationals, U.S. Pro Nationals, the year that Justin was in the ASOS kit. He, he was doing some bumping that caused a crash. You've never seen... Now, Jeff also is not racing on the civil in terms of, like, 
there's not as much uh, incentive for him to do that. Ooh, okay, we got some big splits in the field. We got to get back into it. Corey's riding real close to the front. Real big split in the field. I wonder if there's a crash here. Yeah, I'll agree with that, Anthony. Sh Justin and Jeff should just, like, hash it out rather than posting Instagram reels. I, I would have preferred that for sure. I guess my overall feeling is that it was goofy and it was a bad look. All right. We got Spencer Movenzada in this front group. $200 preem on the line. We got a big split, though. We got three, four butcher box riders. Legion's got Boardman. I need to learn now that Legion is in these new kits. I need to learn, like, what are the little indicators I can look for to see who's who. This is looking like a big gap. Three butcher riders, at least two DCC riders. Uh, Miami Knights has got somebody in there. Here goes Movenzada. Is he preem hunting or does he want to split this group down? My guess would be that he wants to split this group down. He's not normally one to care about preems. Is that Noah Granigan from uh, Denver Disruptors going for it? That's probably too big of a group to stick. They're going to have to split that down if they want to hold the gap. I don't know why we're looking at like the back of the field here. Yeah, I'm still getting used to the new Legion kits. The shiny helmets are the almost exact same as the new Nashville local shiny helmets, too. It's just a specialized shiny silver helmet versus, a, I think, Nashville is on cask. I think maybe, like, Kyle Teasler is the only Nashville guy here. I don't think we've got Jeremiah Stoller, but Teasler is a good uh, dark horse. He's been having some good results. He got a win at the... Snake Alley weekend. Texas Roadhouse pushing it. Like I said, they they want a breakaway for sure. But the mustache of Boardman on that big group, not going to let it go away. See if it's come back together behind. Okay, Dolomite. Corey's gold helmet is goofy. He didn't win the Olympics. But I'll say when Greg Van Evermatt did win the Olympics... And we're all gold stuff all the time. Yeah, the, I think what they're doing with these angles, Anthony, is they're covering a lot of the course that they don't have fixed cameras with the uh, drone shot. But the drone can't keep up with the field if they're going, you know, 30. Yeah, Jackson, I agree. The standard, the new Legion, the shiny silver helmet with the blue, I like it. Um... I think Corey's gold helmet is goofy because that's generally a thing that you only do if you won the Olympics. And even then, it often looks goofy. When Greg Van Avermaet was like dipped in gold for however many years, after like five years because the Olympics got pushed with COVID, uh, he was like head to toe gold. It was too much. He looked like a gold finger. I also just like don't think gold cycling gear looks that cool. Maybe it's because in my mind I just know that gold is heavy. Looks like the field is back together behind. That big split was too big. Butcher Box has got uh, Dusan Palaba, who did really well at Speedic, as well as Evan McQuirk here and Ryan Jastrab. I think that could be a good uh, Dark Horse squad to potentially do something today. Although we're getting down to lap cards, and we don't have a uh, meaningful separation in the group. We haven't seen anything, really, from ACG, American Cycling Group, today. Okay, Andrew Janot. Yeah, ButcherBox really has come through with, like, the sneak sneak hitter team of the year. I kind of thought they were 
losing steam after they lost uh, Movenzada, who was also in the shot right there in the pink helmet. The the new Blazers kits, the color combo is weird with the, like, I think they're weird because the tan is too close to my own skin color. So I'm, like, picturing myself wearing that Blazers kit, and I think I would look like I was shirtless. Some of the writers do. Yeah, Dolomite, I think what was confusing the, the announcers yesterday with the 7 or 5 thing, that was driving me nuts, too. Okay, here's what I think happened. There is no free laps within seven to go. That crash happened before they, like, if they had crossed the finish line one more time, they would not have been allowed a free lap. So they were put back in on a lap, like, on the line, basically. They were put back in on a, where the line was. So if they had crashed one more time or one lap later, they would not have been allowed back in. But the rule is about where the crash happens, the lap that the crash happens on, not the lap where you're put back in, if that makes sense. If it's, yeah, I don't know, Chad. Uh, it's flapping in the wind a little bit back here. I was doing setup at the Woodlawn Street Market and wearing a cap, so it's kind of like stuck to my head weird. When I'm riding the trainer, it always looks weird. I need to get it cut. It's finally getting getting hot. All right, we got the German champion here pushing on. Two Legion riders in it. Looks like Corey is staying up real close to the front. Justin is like yesterday. He's kind of surfing a little farther back. DCC is getting so frustrated. Legion is not going to pull, dude. I guess by tomorrow, maybe they'll have figured it out. The Legion's not going to pull through. Uh, John, 140. <laughs> I'm on, uh, I don't know what the name of this workout is, but I went to Trainer Road and did two-hour endurance. So, <laughs> thanks, Dolomite. Well, I'm going to get rid of it because it's getting too hot. Sam Boardman back to the front, setting pace. Yeah, that's not Alec Cowan, that's Boardman. Pretty sure. Seems like Boardman has shorter hair right now, though. Man, DCC is getting aggressive. It seems like they haven't really accepted that uh, Legion is going to just weld everything back together, though. Or cover and, and not pull through. Noah Granigan from... Uh, Denver, he's probably their best finisher. He got caught up in that seven lap to go crash last night. Not sure he even got back in, but be interesting to see if he can do it tonight. Little bit of separation, but not much. Oh, there we go. Blazers going for it. Mo Venzada going again. He is so motivated. Uh, I used to do that, Dolomite. I used to have Really long hair. Always put it up in a ponytail. Looks like Spencer Movenzada is going solo. 13 is probably too far to go solo, but... Yeah, exactly. Boardman big, Cowan small. And small, no mustaches. Ty. Ty. Uh, small black guys, Corey. Big black guys, Justin. Those are all of the cues, I think, for the squad they've got here. Also, Justin, Justin Red Bull helmet, Corey Gold helmet with the GoPro. I I do like knowing who the guys with the GoPro are because it makes it so much easier to uh, point them out. I think Frank Travieso from Miami Knights was caught up in that crash. Oh, he was. He was DQ'd. Uh, I think I got it on the results right here. Yeah, Cowan was, uh, Cowan and someone named Evan Kim Kimpain from uh, Space City Devo. I don't think that was who we saw get pushed, but it was somebody. He did something last night to get relegated. Sorry, I was going back to look at the DQ list. Clicking all over the place here. Castillo from Denver. 
Looks like he's going for it a little bit. We're within the the period where Legion is going to start mobbing the front and really setting tempo. There's Justin hanging out a little farther back with the uh, Anguillan champ behind him, I think, right there with the GoPro. Hassani Hinnis, I think, is who that is. Yeah, I do think we're, Dolmite, we're in that zone where, like, the guys who want to shoot one last shot are kind of waiting for it to be close enough that they could solo. Ooh, uh-oh, Dolomite. Well, maybe ask him what happened there. I didn't see anything on the stream. It looked like Cowan pushed a rider from uh, Support Clean Sport Guten Plan. Looks like we're starting to see American cycling mobbing toward the front, though. We have not seen really anything from um, AC... I think my money, Blunt, I think it's on ACG. We haven't seen them do anything. I think they're saving their bullets. And I think they got a plan here. My guess is that their plan is to let Legion control it. Pull out these little flyers like the disruptors when we got going on now. And then ACG probably like three to go, four to go. Just goes absolutely nuclear. That's my guess at what we're going to see here. Yeah, 11 is... Too too long to go solo, I think. We're starting to see the washing machine where on these wide roads, you're seeing individual riders pop out to the side, sprint to try and move up. Factor has got a huge presence in the American crits this year. They're also sponsoring... Uh, God, they got like two or three teams. Them and BMC weirdly are like positioning themselves as the American crit bike. I will not be racing a crit on a factor or a BMC, but I don't know, maybe one of those BMC aluminums. Dolomite, the Germans are DCC, right? I think they wanted a... I, I don't think they're a field sprint team. I think they wanted to create some separation. And they didn't have their minds wrapped around the fact that Legion was catching and killing tonight. So they kept getting in moves with Legion. Multiple times tonight I saw a DCC rider do this. Yeah, no problem, Austin. I uh, I love doing it. I hope it makes it fun to watch racing for some other guys. Austin Aviators rider. That was a big dude. Looks like it might have been Iman Lucas taking a look off the front, but uncommitted. Takes a look, realizes he's solo. No one's coming with him. He's going to reshuffle it, 10 to go. Yeah, I mean, Justin is... It's hard to bet against Justin when he's in form and he's doing well. As it seems like he is after yesterday. It is crazy having seen the form that he was in, what, four weeks ago at Speed Week. You know, finishing in groups with guys that I race with. I knew he was there to race his way into form, but man, to get that much form that quickly. I don't know, though. I think ACG is uh, going to gonna rethink their tactic after yesterday. I think the, the crash sort of messed them up because they were sitting a little farther back. I think they've maybe accepted that they can't ride alongside Legion, or Legion's not going to let them ride alongside. We'll see if they do it or not, but I think ACG is going to present a legitimate challenge today. Looks like Movenzada back there in the Legion train. Movenzada is on one today. MVP for Blazers. Single-handedly putting Blazers on my radar today. Other than Fury getting in... Oh, there's Fury. So we got Movenzada and Fury sitting around 10th wheel for Blazers. Maybe one other rider. They're not together, though. It looks like on the left side there, ACG is kind of mobbing up and holding the left. 
which makes me think they're gonna pull left, full gas, take the inside on one of these corners. Again, I think they're probably gonna hold position and do that inside of five to go. Movenzada is on this outside thing. Every time it opens up on the outside, he's out of the saddle sprinting. Estevez is definitely good. I think Fury is going to be their guy tonight, though. He's looking like he's in better position, although maybe, maybe that's Estevez on the right there, just beside the uh, right there. Could be that we got a Movenzada, Fury, Estevez train setting up. But it does, I'm seeing ACG is riding together. so together and consistently to the left. And this course has five left turns. Echelon is not here. That is the other team I meant to mention. So I think that renders my uh, prediction for tomorrow moot. That's the real hard prediction. Today is one thing, but what do you guys think about tomorrow? Who's going to win on Crybaby? I guess if Echelon is not here, I'm going to say maybe ButcherBox on Crybaby. I'm going to say Evan McQuirk, Dark Horse pick for Crybaby. Yeah, D looks like DCC has been shuffled back. We haven't mentioned it at all, but Miami Knights also in the mix last night. Two in the top five. Uh, Clever Martinez, if anybody can crash the Legion train, it's Clever. And now that he's not on Blazers, he maybe has a little bit more like license and freedom to do that. But they got Alfredo Rodriguez. They got Clever Martinez. That could be a dangerous combination. I think we're going to see more status quo until we get within five to go, though. Yeah, that's true. See, that's why I think I like what ACG is doing. They're together. ACG and ButcherBox are kind of doing the opposite of each other. Like, ACG is staying together and on the left. ButcherBox is staying together and on the right. And the, this is a wide course. So it's really just going to become a uh, question of which side does a gap open up on and do they time it right? Because you can't, you, Legion is not going to fan out, you know, six wide. Ooh, okay, Andre. Yeah, that's a good pick. I don't have a specific German name to, I'm going to say Dario Raps is my pick from DCC. He was the best finisher yesterday. Although very different course tomorrow, Crybaby Hill, than the course yesterday. So maybe it favors a completely different rider. Or maybe that's just the guy that got lucky and he was in front of the in front of the split when it happened. Alright, Legion's in Legion mode. We got Boardman. We got Ty. Oh, it looks like we got two two mustaches here. So maybe it is Cowan with the mustache. Yeah, that's that's Cowan. Boardman's behind. Looks like they're going small to big. So smallest guy does their pull, pull bigger guy, bigger guy. Are y'all seeing Justin now? I'm looking for the Red Bull helmet. Might be a little bit hard, you know, helmet's a little bit busy, but looks like Disruptor's trying to move up on the inside. See, ACG is just, they're holding the exact same position always on the left, always together. Yeah, those Germans are, are big dudes. That's why I'm saying Butcher Box. Butcher Box is hanging on these flat courses, but they're all small guys like me. I think tomorrow... Woo, okay, we got some dollar prem on this lap. So... Is anybody going to challenge Legion for the $1,000 prem? Okay, Justin's five behind Corey. It's weird to set up a full lead-out train. Maybe Justin is just insurance. Maybe Corey is the designated sprinter there. 
And then Justin is just like, if we took the front too early and it falls apart, I'm going to freelance my way to the win like I did yesterday. That's a... Oh, no, he's back on the train. Justin was just making his way up. I don't know. We'll see. Ooh. South African national champion there. That is Janze van Rinsberg, Rein Reinhardt Janze van Rinsberg for disruptors up there in the middle of the train. And uh, that dude is South African national champion. He was on last year. He was on uh, Quebeca or Dimension Data, maybe both before that. But yeah, I think now that Justin's made contact, it's pretty clear that it's Justin. Oh, here's Van Rinsberg. He's going for the frame. Yep. Van Rinsberg. Former, uh, oh no, that was not Van Rensburg. That was the DCC German champion. I thought we were looking at uh, Van Rensburg from South Africa. Jonas Schmeister for DCC there. He's got a sick uh, German flag bike. All right, we're inside five to go. This is what's going to happen. That one is German, but I don't know if Germany has its own, like, Criterium jersey or if that's just German road overall. Yeah, Corey's too far forward. Corey's going to do his death pull with, like, three or four to go. Looks like we've got Ty has shuffled himself back. Ty is in front of Justin. question is, does Ty... Is it going for Ty and Justin is sweeper, or is Ty Justin's lead out? The, those two guys, Justin and Ty, are I, I think probably the best all-around rider on their team. Oh. ACG, right behind Legion. They've moved up. They're still on rider left, our right. I was saying, I think they're going to do something within five to go. And we got Butcher box, like mirror image. Butcher box on the outside. ACG on the inside. Stragglers from Blazers. We got Fury in the mix. I think Fury is actually just trying to get consistent top tens to, uh, well, this is not an ACG race. Yesterday was ACG. I do think Fury is targeting that ACG, or ACC, sorry, overall. We got ACC, American Criterium Cup, and ACG. American Cycling Group, right there on the left. This is the showdown. The question is, does ACG jump and try to take over the Legion lead out? I think they're going to at least try it. Within five to go, which is where we're at now, I think they're just going to go absolutely nuclear and try to get their whole train around the Legion train. A few DCC guys riding alongside here. In front of Butcher Box. Here we go. You are correct, Joe. I think I'm seeing Johnny Brown from uh, Blazers. He's about half. He's too far back, though. He's 25th, 30th. He's back there behind Hassani Hennis. Hassani Hennis with the GoPro on his head. Uh, and Geelan flag on the Legion still on the front. The announcers are talking about not liking Justin's body language. Could be a tie day. Someone asked, why is Ty not the not the leader today? Since Justin is, you know, was racing his way into form. Hey, I agree with that. I think Ty looks good. He's a great sprinter. German guys. Fully infiltrated. I think the German guys want to get in front. They just haven't raced with Legion, so they don't know kind of what the score is. I think ACG and ButcherBox are both waiting for their their uh, moment. Uh, Stars and Stripes is uh, Michael Hernandez. 
American national champion. He's on ACG. I'm just waiting for one of these trains to make a jump. Looks like Legion is maybe like fanning out a little bit so that nobody's got a super clean line. These are long laps. This is a long course. I think I'm seeing the uh, GoPro shark fan of Clever Martinez on the uh, on our left, rider's right, against the yellow barricades over there. The shover was Alec Cowan. Oh, Hernandez, yes. That was uh, Justin and... Uh, I don't know if you call him the shover or the shovey. I think they both did some pushing there. But yeah, he was the one who got into it with Justin at Salt Lake uh, last year. I think he's probably going to be like the first lead out guy for ACG. Looks like ACG is still together. They got a loper from Blazers. Justin back on the back of that Legion train. I think Justin is going to Saturn sit up. We got somebody moving up on the left here. Who is that? Somebody from Butcher Box. It's too early. Too early. Nope. Yeah, you're helping Legion at this point. He looked back and said, no. Nah, that was I think he was maybe in the in the draft there and thought, I'm feeling good. Maybe I should take a little flyer. He hit the wind, and when you hit the wind at like 31 probably they're doing right now it immediately becomes apparent like oh i cannot uh ride away from this group but you get in the wind i'm doing several hundred more watts just to maintain this speed yeah dolomite you're right that is the uh rider who had the drama with uh he was on best buddies at the time ACG is essentially best buddies. Same uh same organization. Ooh, somebody lost a bottle. Bottle flipping around. Everybody look out for that. Here we go. One to go. I was wrong. ACG never went for it. Not yet. Legion's just got two in front. It's a long lap, but two in front is probably right here. Yeah, I think it is hot, Dolomite. Yeah, I think so. I also saw uh, uh, Danny Summerhill. You know, they kind of like high fived, and I think that that drama is also. I don't know about water under the bridge, but you know, here we go. Hernandez on the left, full sprint. It's too fast. Magner's on the front. Well, Williams has lost position. He's about 10th. Legion's lost control. Can Justin... Justin's in the same spot he was yesterday. He's got to freelance it from here. He's proven he can do it. The, <laughs> that sea rider looks like a cartoon character chewing on the front tire. ACG first into the last corner. Summerhill's first out of the corner. He's all in. Summerhill. Summerhill. Nobody's going to do it. It's Summerhill. Wow. Summerhill. He was third last night. He finally figured it out. Well, this is the interesting season that I wanted to see. People are figuring out how to race against Legion, and they're learning when to save their bullets and when to spin their bullets, when to make a Legion do the work. So far, I think we're getting what I, you know, go back to the American Peloton show from last week, but I think we would get Legion, Legion the first night, someone else the second night, and then I said Project Echelon the third night, which we're not going to get, so... I'm going to lock in my prediction for tomorrow as Butcher Box. That was awesome. That was a... Uh...
That was a sick finish. Yeah, Jackson, Legion lost control with uh, the same amount of time to go both nights, but last night Justin was able, I think partially last night, like Justin was able to do that because no one knew he was there. But tonight everybody was kind of looking at him a little bit more. And I think a lot more guys were just saying, like, I got to be, I got to be farther forward. I knew that ACG was uh, hurting for, for a win like that, a win at that level. Who do you guys think for tomorrow? And also, should I do this again tomorrow? You guys want to hang out and watch one more? I think tomorrow, I mean, Crybaby Hill is always the most interesting one of the weekend. It's so hard to control. You've got that one really technical corner coming on to the finish straight. Crybaby Hill. I mean, it's Legion will not just be riding the front tomorrow. I will say, like, something else is going to happen. Maybe they'll do what they did today and try to cover, but. Yeah, well, keep your eyes peeled here. I may, uh, may do a watch along tomorrow, but we will definitely be talking about all these races on American Peloton. All right, cool. Well, you know, watch the channel. Keep uh, keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this one off and finish my workout here. I'm trying to get like 14 hours for the week. But, yeah, see you guys tomorrow. That was a fun race. I think we're going to get an even crazier one tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow Legion will uh, let Cowan off the leash. I do think, I think the Germans looking at him are maybe too big. I'm sticking with Butcher Box because I think... They're like punching above their weight literally on these flatter courses, but tomorrow it's going to be more of their, their territory. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, everybody. See you guys later. See you guys tomorrow.